and all his sisters and all that had been of his acquaintance before and did eat bread with him, feasting has come in his house, in your house, blessing, in your house, restoration, in your house, mountain moving away. And they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Traditional people, their tradition, their false doctrine, so remain with them. But Job did not believe that anymore because he said, I said what I didn't understand. I will not say that anymore. You will not sing the old songs anymore. Sometimes down, sometimes up. Sometimes in the valley, sometimes on the mountain, sometimes they blow me here, they blow me there, sometimes adversity, sometimes they crush me, sometimes I rise up above the waters. All those old things will not say them anymore. New language, new authority, new power, new understanding, new joy in your life. And every man also gave him a piece of money. Gifts will come to you. Yeah. And everyone an earring of gold. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. Your future is brighter than the past. Yeah. From this day, you'll be going higher. From this day, you'll be growing stronger. And your latter age will be more blessed than your beginning in Jesus' name. For he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and a 1,000 yoke of oxen and a 1,000 she horses. He had also, he had also, tell me now, Tell me, tell me, seven sons and three daughters. Did he separate from the wife? Did he divorce the wife? You know, some people, they go to one prayer house somewhere. And in the prayer house or prayer camp, whatever, they say, your wife is the problem. She is blocking your destiny. She is blocking your progress. As long as that woman is with you, you will not make it. What did she tell you the other time? Actually, prophet, that's what she told me. She said, curse God and that. Did I tell you? The woman is a witch. Drive her away. She is blocking your progress. Your wife is not a witch. I said, your wife is not a witch. You know, sometimes somebody can get discouraged. Somebody can be perplexed. And she can say something she shouldn't have said. There's no separation because of that. There's no divorce because of that. God will still bless your marriage through that woman in Jesus' name. Handsome sons, you will have through her. Beautiful daughters, you'll have through her. And then it says in verse 14, And he called the name of the first Jemima, and the name of the second Kezia, and the name of the third Karen Hapuch. He knows the meaning of that. Don't worry about the names. And in all the land, there were no women found so fair as the daughters of Job. And their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. After this lived Job and hundred and forty years and saw his sons and his son's sons, even for generations. 
And Job died being old and full of days. Where are you? Long life. Happy life. Blessed life. All the water that has gone under the bridge, forget. A new life has now come. Yeah. New power has now come. Yeah. A new breakthrough has now come in Jesus' name. Stand up and receive. Stand up and receive. Stand up and receive. Don't cry anymore. Don't complain anymore. And don't say things that are not right anymore. Come out of the era of Job and come to the new dispensation. Open your mouth. Blessings are available today. For chase blessing, healing, health, peace, progress, protection, assurance of answered prayer, deliverance, dominion, satisfaction, sufficiency, security, fruitfulness, fullness, fulfillment, happiness, and heaven waiting for you at last. Don't let that mountain remain. Speak to that mountain. Speak to that challenge in your life. And speak to that sickness. It will go. It must go. It must go. Agree with me. I agree with you. If two of us shall agree as touching anything that we ask of the Father, it shall be done. It is finished. Mountains, finished. Adversity, finished. Suffering, finished. Sickness, finished. Attacks finished, affliction finished. Praise the Lord is finished on the cross. My sins are finished on the cross of Calvary. My sorrows finished on the cross of Calvary. My suffering finished on the cross of Calvary. My sickness finished on the cross of Calvary. Afflictions finished on the cross of Calvary. Attacks finished on the cross of Calvary. All the boils on Job finished on the cross of Calvary. Ulcer finished on the cross of Calvary. Cancer finished on the cross of Calvary. Slavery finished on the cross of Calvary. Curse finished on the cross of Calvary. Mountains finished on the cross of Calvary. All the tears are finished on the cross of Calvary. Agony finished on the cross of Calvary. Perplexity is finished on the cross of Calvary. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. You're free. You're free. The Lord has set you free. His blood has set you free. His word has set you free. His promise has set you free. Don't accept. Don't accept. Don't accept that this is happening or that is happening. It's gone. It's gone. And you will have whatsoever you say. Satan does not have the last say in your life. Demons do not have the last say in your life. Enemies do not have the last say in your life. The village does not have the last say in your life. Conspirators, competitors do not have the last say in your life. The last word is in your mouth. Speak it out. Against that mountain, it will go. Against that oppression, it will go. Against that adversity, it will go. Don't bend, don't bow. 
for Satan. The plead was Satan. Command him. Command him. You're a child of God. You stand in Christ. You live in Christ. Whosoever shall say, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea. And shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he will have whatsoever he says. Abide in me. Abide in him. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and shall be done unto you. You will ask what you want, what you desire, and it shall be done unto you. You are not an unfortunate brother. You are not an unfortunate sister. You are a child of God, a new creature in Christ. Yours is the victory. Yours is the answered prayer. Yours is the authority. Yours is the power. Yours is the breakthrough. And God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. That power will work in your soul, work in your body, Walk in your spirit. Walk in your family. Walk in your life. Walk in your profession. Walk in everything that concerns you. Power. Authority. The name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The word of Jesus, the saint's word, healed them all and delivered them from all their afflictions. God has given him a name above every name that at the mention of the name of Jesus. Every knee should bow. Every knee should bow. That evil power will bow. That evil personality will bow. That evil thing will bow. Get out of your life. That every knee should bow of things above, of things on earth, and of things beneath. To the glory of God the Father, promises that cannot fail, promise of life, promise of godliness. has all things waiting for you. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him for us all, how much more? Will he not freely give us all things to enjoy? He will. 
all things available all blessings available freedom deliverance dominion power authority breakthrough healing having what you say available available Satan will not determine your destiny the final word is in your mouth the final word is not the feeling of your body the final word is not the condition of your body the final word is what you say with your mouth say the final word to that mountain now say the final word to that sickness now say the final word to that adversity right now say the final word to that challenge you have in your life final 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 irreversible nobody can refuse and nobody can dispute that final word speak the final word speak the final word to that challenge in your life and nobody 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 can reverse that final word In Jesus' name we pray. You have said the final word is final. It's final. Satan cannot sneak behind the back door there and say, I remove that. Nothing removed from your prayer. I change that. It doesn't have the authority. It cannot change anything you have said. As you go back home, and you go back to your house, you go back celebrating. You go back rejoicing. I will see you on the mountain top. Where is the person on the mountain top? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, because you have given us the final word. And that final word is confirmed by Calvary, confirmed by the cross, confirmed by Jesus Christ. Lord, we have spoken the final word against every mountain, against every adversity, against every challenge, against every sickness, against every disease, against every magic of the devil, against occultism, against every cause. Lord, that word of deliverance, of redemption is final in Jesus' name. Curse, you are removed. Sickness, you are removed. Adversity, you are removed. Mountain, you are removed in Jesus' name. Anything the enemy has said is cancelled in your life. Anything the demons are proposing, cancelled out of your life. 
anything that is contrary to the fullness of the benefits of the promise of God in your life, it is cancelled in Jesus' name. You are free. You are more than free. You are victorious. You are more than victorious. You are triumphant. You are more than triumphant. You are a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. You will climb every mountain. You will cross every ocean. You will achieve everything the Lord has ordained for you. You go from strength to strength, from power to power, from authority to authority. Like God made the latter end of Job to be better and higher and greater than this beginning. God has come to bless you and to make your latter end greater than your beginning in Jesus' name. Go on possessing. Go on prospering. Go on progressing. And that dream the Lord has put in your heart, your dream will be fulfilled. Lord, confirm it for everyone. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name, the time is short. I come quickly. I come soon. I come very soon. But in the understanding of prophetic utterance, so we need to understand the proper meaning and the proper explanation of prophetic shortness of time. We're looking at three things here. Number one is the explicit prophecy on the shortness of time. Explicit prophecy on the shortness of time. Number two, expedient perception of the shortness of time. Number three, exponential progress within the shortness of time. Let's come to number one. In number one, we're looking at explicit prophecy on the shortness of time. Three things we're looking at. Number one, comprehending the eschatological shortness of time. Eschatology, the study of last things and the prophecy of the time we're living in until the coming of the Lord. Number two, contrasting the eternal silence on time. In eternity, there is, um, there is the silence on the hours and the days and the weeks and the months and the years because it's eternity and it doesn't end. Number three, consecrating our earthly share, consecrating our earthly share of time. Number one, comprehending the eschatological shortness of time. We're coming back to First Corinthians chapter 7 verse 29 it says this i say brethren the time is short take it in an eschatological manner understand it the time is short paul the apostle was thinking about the rapture about the coming of the lord and you know when he talked about the rapture he said we which are alive shall be caught up together with them. He counted himself as those, as part of the people that will take place in the rapture. When he said, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. When he said, We, he counted himself as part of the people that will be changed. In the twinkling of an eye, because the trumpet shall sound and we shall all be changed. He was talking about the rapture and he thought the time between the time he lived and the time the rapture will take place is short, very short. Look at James chapter 5, reading from verse 7. 
in James chapter 5 verse 7 be patient therefore brethren unto the coming of the Lord unto the coming of the Lord behold the Osman man waiteth for the precious uh, fruit of the earth and has long patience for it until he received the early and latter rain. Verse 8. In verse 8, he tells us, Be ye also therefore, be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth near. The coming of the Lord draweth near. How near? How soon? Look at verse 9. In verse 9, grudge not one against another brethren lest ye be condemned behold the judge standeth before the door he had said in verses 7 and 8 that the coming of the lord draweth near and that the lord is coming very soon and then he said he is even standing before the door that's another way of saying the time is short but understand that shortness of time is eschatological. That is, we're considering age in the light of when the Lord will come. Look at First Peter chapter seven, chapter four, verse seven. First Peter chapter four, verse seven. But the end of all things is at hand. That's another way of saying the time is short. End of all things at hand very near be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer but understand he wrote this about two thousand years ago and yet he said it is at hand that's how the lord revealed the shortness of time eschatologically unto them and that's the same that we have read in revelation chapter 12 verse 12 chapter 12 verse 12 the last line because he knows that he has but a short time the short time therefore as we consider eschatology is not short time like one year short time like 10 years short time like a hundred years short time like a thousand years we do not know when the lord will come short in the sense that it may come today it may come in a thousand years, it may come in two thousand years. In prophetic language, the time is short, but not short with the understanding of that word from the English dictionary short, 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 very brief. It is eschatological. Look at number two here. Number two, contrasting the eternal silence on time now in eternity it is long long without calculation and so when you compare a thousand years two thousand years ten thousand years with eternity ten thousand years of a short very short because eternity is unending and so in comparison when we say short in contrast to eternal time unending 10,000 will be short very short Acts chapter 1 verse 6 when they therefore were come together they asked of him saying Lord wilt thou at this time at this time this year this period this generation 70 years 40 years this time wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to israel they asked that question more than two more than uh, two thousand years ago before christ went to heaven look at verse seven in verse seven it says and he said unto them it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the father has put in his own power god the father does not look at time the way you look at time 
God the Father, the Father of eternity, who dwells in eternal ages without end, no beginning, no ending. He doesn't think of time like you think of time. Therefore, it is not for you humans to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. Revelation chapter 10, reading from verse 6. It says, and I swear by him that liveth forever and ever, by him that liveth forever and ever, eternity, who created heaven and the things that are there, that are therein, the earth and the things that are there, that therein are, and the sea and the things which are therein, that, look at this, there should be time no longer. There should be time no longer. Therefore, when we get to the other side, when the rapture has taken place and the great revelation has taken place and the Lord had come and there is a renovation, a change, the creation of the new heavens and the new earth and we're here forever and ever and ever. The time at present, thousand years, two thousand years, three thousand years, the time at present in comparison, contrast to eternity, is very short. There is silence on time in eternity. First John chapter 2 verse 18. First John chapter 2 verse 18, little children, it is the last time. It is the last time. Now we need to understand that eschatologically. It is the last time. It's like this is the last period. This is the last dispensation. And as you have heard that the Antichrist shall come. After the rapture, the Antichrist shall come. Even now, there are many Antichrists. The Antichrist, one personality, shall come. But now, there are people that have the spirit of the Antichrist, whereby we know it is the last time. And remember, he said this, he wrote this more than 2,000 years ago. And yet, the time is short. Short with the understanding that we're talking about between now and the coming of the Lord. And in Revelation chapter 22, verse 10, Revelation 22, verse 10, and he saith unto me, Seal not the seals of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. 2,000 years have passed, the time is at hand. Short, at hand, in comparison with eternity. Look at number three there. Number three, consecrating our earthly share of time our earthly share of time now when we talk of the time between christ's first coming and this time that we that we are in now more than uh, a thousand year, two thousand years but paul did not have two thousand years to live and work he had his own share of time and Peter did not have 2,000 years to walk, to labor, to evangelize. He had his own share of time. You and I, we do not have 1,000 years to live, 2,000 years to live. We only have a share of the time. The time is short, but that short time, eschatology, can prolong to 2,000 years or even more. But we only have a share. You only have a share. And you want to consecrate your own earthly share of time. First Corinthians chapter 7. We're reading from verse 29. But this I say, brethren, that the time is short. If we could read it, my earthly time is short. Your earthly time is short. Paul's earthly time is short. The Corinthians that lived at that time, their earthly time was short. 
this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remains that both they that have wives be as though the arch none is not saying that husbands should neglect their wives. What he's saying is, don't allow every day to be holiday, every day to be honeymoon, and you are locked in and they say, evangelism is there. Yes, I know. The work of God is there. Yes, I know. But I love my wife so much and we're still in honeymoon. Every day, honeymoon. All right? If you're going to do honeymoon every day, do as if you are not married. Let her do as, she, as if she was not married and both of you come out and get involved in the work of the Lord so that your joy your concentration, your consecration will be on making Christ known, on saving souls, on helping people to know the Lord. There is nothing wrong with good fellowship between husband and wife, but carry that fellowship to the saving of souls as if you were not married, so that you are not spending all your time in private, secluded, internal house uh, pleasure you're coming out and carry the time you have and the treasures you have and the skill you have carry that to the open and serve the lord look at verse 30 in verse 30 it says and they that weep as though they wept not it's saying the time your own time share of time of the thousands of years your own share is short because of that are you weeping uh things uh, turning here and they understand the suffering uh, and the predicament and the persecution will not be forever and receive uh, there's no problem and receive in comparison to eternity in hellfire this one is nothing in comparison to those who are going to suffer forever and ever who are not saved this short time of suffering is nothing that they that weep as though they wept not and they that rejoice as though they rejoice not don't allow uh, you know the prosperity and the success and the joy and the overcoming everything to carry you away say praise the lord that has happened praise the lord it made me succeed praise the lord things are going well and yet you don't concentrate on that you consecrate your time and your life on working for the lord and they that buy as do they possess not verse 31 it says and they that use this world you have the things of the world material things in the world technical things of the world and the gadgets of the world you use them as not abusing them for the passion of this world passes away it tells us in um, it tells us in the Tommy chapter 34, we're reading from verse 7. It says, And Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated. Now, uh, we have uh, Moses here. You remember the life of Moses, uh, the first 40 years? It was in the palace in the house of Pharaoh. And then the next 40 years, he went to, the, uh, to Jethro because he ran away, having done something wrong. He became 80 years of age, and God called him at 80. And when he called him at 80, he said, I'm sending you to Pharaoh, and you have a work to do. Now, if Moses had said, I'm 80 already, and time is short. And because of the shortness of time, what I have not done all those 80 years, what can I do now? My share of time on earth is short. Well, God was not thinking of the number 80. He was thinking of the calling, of the project, of the plan, 
of the goal, of the ideal, of the things he had for him, and he still sent him whatever your share of time here on earth. Make sure that you give yourself to doing what the Lord wants you to do. The work of the Lord will prosper in your hands in Jesus' name. We're looking at verse 10. Look at verse 10. And there arose not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses. If Moses had made a misunderstood the shortness of time, a share of the shortness of time, what would he have done? What would he have said to start a new project, a new plan, a new outreach, a new endeavor, and a new work, something he had not done in the past 80 years? If he had thought, well, time is short, I'm already 80, what can I do now? I wish I knew this before this time. You wouldn't have done much. Therefore, whatever age you are, as the Lord is calling you and he says, go do my work and go preach the gospel and go evangelize and go serve me, understand. God knows your share of the shortness of time. And the share you have, make sure that you use it in such a way as to do what the Lord wants done. And there arose not a prophet since in Israel, like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, it says, In all the signs and the wonders which the Lord sent him to do, in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh and to all his servants and to all his land. He didn't have that kind of power all through the 80 years. He didn't have that kind of manifestation, signs and wonders all through the 80 years. And God called him. He sensed the call. He accepted the call. He believed in the call at the age of 80. And he said, God knows my share of the shortness of time. And therefore, I'm not going to, you know, sit back and say, it's too late now. I'm 80. There's nothing I can do. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, and in all the mighty hand, and in all the great terror which Moses showed in the sight of all Israel. I pray the Lord will make us wise will make you in particular, will make you wise in Jesus' name. You will discern, you will understand that shortness of time is not the same for everyone. You remember in 2 Kings chapter 20, I'm reading from verse 6, the man was sick, sick unto death, and Isaiah was sent to him, and Isaiah said, uh, that he should set his house in order because he will die. Your share of time is over. Now, he could have accepted that just at face value. My time is short. I don't have even many weeks to stay on. Your time is short. Set your house in order. You are going. But then we know the story. He turned his face to the wall and he said, Lord, can you give me more? Can you stretch the share of time that I have? I know I'm not going to live for a thousand years here. I know my time is short now. Can you stretch it a little bit for me so that I don't die now? And then in verse 6, and I will add unto thy days 15 years, 15 years. So, it is not like it's final. Time is short. You are going now. Don't talk about it. The prophet has said it. It is all over. He said, no. Unknown sickness will not kill you. Untimely sickness will not kill you. And you will not compare your life with the life of a daddy, grandfather, grandmother or mother 
the time God gives you, if he has given you a job to do, and you need more time, whatsoever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive, it shall be given unto you. Amen. I will add unto thy days 15 years, and I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. Look at verse 7. And in verse 7, and Isaiah said, Take a lump of figs. The Lord said, I have given you 15 years. And now, after the Lord had given him 15 years, Isaiah now came back to him. And Isaiah said, Take a lump of figs. And they took and laid it on the boil. And he recovered. And you recover. And I recover. Before I move on, there are people that have the promise of God. And thank God, you have the promise of God. I said you have the promise of God. Now, they have the promise of God, but they don't take care of themselves. If they have any challenge that requires medical attention, they don't check up. If they're feeling somehow in the head, somehow in the brain, they say the devil is sick. They say that is not my portion. They say, you know what they say? And so they just go on. If they have, uh, you know, blood pressure, if they have uh, sugar too much in their blood, they, they don't uh, think of anything. They just say, I know what the Lord has said. I have the promise of God. Yet she had the promise of God, and Isaiah said, Take a lump of figs. Are there supplements you can take so that whatever is missing in your system because of getting older, older, and older, it will keep you up? Do that, and then your diet, not carbohydrate, carbohydrate every time fruits, vegetables, and everything in a balanced way, even though the Lord has given us the promise, he wants us to understand that we also need to regulate our lives, what we eat, and drink water so that you will be properly hydrated and so that you will not just, I'm tired, I am tired, what will I do? And sleep at the right time and sleep for the number of hours you ought to sleep. The Lord grants you understanding in all things. The Lord will take care of you. And then what the Lord has provided for us to take care of ourselves Make use of them. If it's only just a lump of figs you are going to take, and then they lay it on the boil, and they bandage that sore, so that uh, bacteria or whatever will not come in there, and uh, whatever has happened, take care, and the Lord is also taking care of you. Your share of time here on earth will be maximally utilized in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number two now. Point number two, expedient perception of the shortness of time. Expedient perception of the shortness of time. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 29, But this I say, brethren, he was talking to brethren. He was talking to people, people who are born again, and people who have the promises of God, and they rely on the Lord. And he's talking to you because you're a brother, you're a sister. But, I, but this I say, brethren, the time is short. Let's come to Psalm 90. And I'm reading from verse 10. Psalm 90 verse 10. Before I read Psalm 90 verse 10, look at the top of the, of the chapter of Psalm 90. And uh, tell me who wrote the psalm, Psalm 90, the prayer of, tell me out aloud, tell me, tell me, 
the prayer of Moses. How important is that? You see what, how important it is now. We're coming to Psalm 19 verse 10. The days of our years are three score and ten. The days of our years are three score and ten. A score is twenty. Three score, sixty. And ten, the seventy. And if by reason of strength, they be four score years, four score years, how many years is that? Eighty years. Yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. The point is this Moses, who wrote this prayer, who wrote this time, he said, generally, for the people of the world and the people of his world, the days of our years generally are 70 years. And if by reason of strength they become 80 years, yet is their, is their strength labor and sorrow. That means by the time generally they are aging, they are tired, they are weak, their brain is getting off from being useful, the connections of the brain and the remembrance of things they cannot remember, their eyes are dim, their back is bent, and their muscles are flabby, and they cannot walk straight anymore. But the same Moses that said that, that generally the time, the span of years, is 70 years, and if you try and get to 80, you are so weak, you even want to go. You don't want to be so old as 80, and then you are so weak, and there's nothing you can do, and you're saying it is better to leave than to stay. The same Moses that wrote that lived until 120 years of age. That's why we need to understand. Anytime you read verses like this, you look at the context and you look at what is being said. You don't say, okay, I'm 70 now. And then you tell the group pastor or you tell the state overseer or region overseer, national overseer, I cannot be coming to workers meeting anymore. Why? I clocked 70 last week. And because I clocked 70, and I've read in the Bible, in Psalm 90, verse 10, that the days of our years are just 70 years. And if we try to make an effort and to do this and that, we'll be causing ourselves unnecessary sorrow and unnecessary trouble. Therefore, I'm getting out of the work of God. You will not go out of the work of God. Your lamb will not go off in the middle of your years in Jesus' name. Because the Moses that wrote that still went on and on. And when God called him at 80, he didn't say, God, already uh, please uh, read uh, Psalm 90, verse 10, uh, and interpret it to me because that is my age bracket. He knew that God knew what he was doing in your life. God was strengthening you. Yeah. At 70, God was strengthening you. Yeah. Of course, at 45, 47, 55, 60, the strength of the Lord and the joy of the Lord will be your strength in Jesus' name. Yeah. And then he said, it is so cut off and will fly away. Now his life was not cut off like that. Your life will not be cut off. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, it says, Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. Look at verse 12. Verse 12, so teach us to number our days. Teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. 
teach us to number our days that means then as you look at how life is actually the world is uh, very different now from uh, let's say about 100 years ago why because the civilization and the way life is is going this time things are different you see at the beginning that is genesis chapter uh, one all through to chapter two or chapter five uh, Methuselah lived more than 900 years and Adam lived more than 900 years and then you have all those people Lamech and the others and, and Enoch you know their story and Noah you know the story and the sons of Noah you know their story they lived hundreds of years and then it came to another period like the period of Abraham and then their lives were no more like um, up to 200 years even though you have the mention of 120 years in um, Genesis chapter 6, and it says, My spirit shall not always strive with men because he has just 120 years, and yet Sarah went be beyond 120, Abraham went beyond 120, Isaac went beyond 120, and Jacob went beyond 120. All those numbers are given for general people. But when it comes to specific people, the time is short. That's what we're looking at. It doesn't mean that that is the ceiling and you cannot go beyond this point or that point. The Lord will favor you. And so you, the Lord gives you wisdom to say, this is who I am now and this is where I am now. What can I still do? How do I number my days? How do I number my years? How do I plan? How do I project? How do I live so that my life will be quality life? Your life will be of quality. Your aspirations of quality. Your endeavor of quality and your activities of quality in Jesus' name. It says, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Three things. Number one, the sinner's shortness of time. We talk of shortness of time for sinners, their shortness of time. Number two, the saints stretching of time the saints stretching of time number three the sages sufficiency of time for those who are wise they have sufficiency of time let's look at number one the sinners shortness of time we're looking at ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 17 it says be not over much wicked neither be thou foolish why shouldest thou die before thy time you see the people who are wicked the people who are sinful uh, you know they do some reckless things and they do some risky things for example uh, you know a young man uh, will feel that he's uh, quite uh, bold and courageous and the vehicle is moving and instead of allowing the vehicle to stop then he opens the door he jumps out he feels that he's playing games with life and there is a vehicle coming he didn't know a vehicle was coming and then he's crushed and he said that was his time that was his faith he said that's what god has done god has not done that he himself cut short his life by his simple reckless risky kind of uh, living or there are times uh, people take uh, some drugs had drugs and they do not understand the effect of those drugs in their lives it affects their brain it affects their cells it affects every part of their life it affects who they confront or who they talk to and uh, some people will confront uh, you know they are very bold and therefore they talk about this and talk about that and the people they talk about they are angry and they come to do something to them be not over much wicked look at life be balanced in life 
neither be thou foolish in your talk, in your utterance, in your action, in your endeavor, in the things you try. It says, why shouldest thou die before thy time? You will not die before your time. Look at uh, Psalm 55, verse 23. In Psalm 55, verse 23, But thou, O God, shall bring them into the pit of